Hi, my name is Sean Walker, and I'm a Principal Product Success Architect and part of the Ranger team here at ServiceNow. Today I'm going to be talking to you about creating software entitlements. So in today's video, we're going to do a, show you a quick definition of what a software entitlement is. Then we'll go through the different ways to create software entitlements, and then I'll do a demo on the different ways to create those entitlements. So what is a software entitlement? So software entitlements represent that point in time purchase of a right to use the software. So when you purchase an entitlement, you don't actually own the software itself. You're purchasing a right to use that software. Software entitlements refer to the asset itself and it represents the, the type, the quantity, the cost and the right to use. Um, software entitlements uh, can also be referred to as software licenses in a lot of cases. So software entitlements, they define the license details of purchased software. So it's important when you're gathering those entitlements that you capture details like the PPN, which is the publisher part number, the cost, the quantity, etc. They also track the licenses that you've been allocated um, to those users or systems. So allocating and allocating entitlements really helps the software asset manager validate that that user or that system is actually approved to use that entitlement. Um, software entitlements are associated with software models. So it's really important that you ensure the entitlement is associated with the correct software model. Um, incorrect or incorrectly configured software models can have a really big impact on your overall compliance position. Uh, entitlements are stored in the ALM license table, which can be a little bit confusing since there is another table named ALM entitlements, but that's where it's, uh, the system uses uh, to store those allocations of the entitlements. So there are several different ways to create entitlements in the software asset management workspace. The first is to use the guided walkthrough or the playbook experience. And this option is really great for those just getting it started out with software asset management because it takes you through step by step all the required information to, to properly create a software entitlement. The next is you can create individual entitlements using the standard entitlement form. So this is a great option for those who are more experienced SAM users and just want a quick entitlement uh, form to enter. And lastly, you can also use the bulk import process to import multiple entitlements at once. So this is great for those SAM users who are consolidating information directly from the publisher or their procurement data. So they've received like an invoice or they have a price sheet or uh, contract information and they wanna layer in say even hundreds of entitlements at once and bring them all in at the same time. I'm now gonna do a demo of creating entitlements manually in a Washington DC release of ServiceNow. Okay, so now I've logged into ServiceNow and I've navigated to the software asset workspace. So I'm gonna show you today how to create an entitlement manually using the entitlement form. So the first thing I'm gonna do is navigate to the license operations section and go to software entitlements. From here, I'll click new and here's where I have the three different options. So we're gonna to choose to fill out the details in a standard form today, and which will pull up the standard software entitlement form. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is wherever possible, use my publisher part number. So I look at my invoice, I pull up my publisher part number, and this is gonna automatically create my software model for me. I can also put in a, um, asset tag if I want. Um, this is something you're gonna use is within your own organization, something specific to you to identify this purchase. Um, again, software model TechSmith Camtasia 2023. And I can scroll down here and, and it's filled in because of the publisher part number, a lot of this license details for me. Um, this is just a generic agreement. If we maybe if we have an enterprise agreement, we could pick that. But in this case, I'm just doing a generic agreement. The metric group group is common because it's not one of those major uh, publishers. It's just a generic publisher. 
and the license type is perpetual plus maintenance and it knows this because of the part number I put in. So that is correct. I could also choose perpetual if I didn't have maintenance on it, etc. if it was just a maintenance entitlement. Um, it knows by default that it is a per user and that's again because of the publisher part number. So I'm going to leave my metric as per user. And here's where I look again at my invoice and I say, how many am I purchasing today? We're going to say we purchased 20 copies of Camtasia and the price for each one of those was $159. And again, since this is perpetual plus maintenance, I'm going to go ahead and put my start date on when my maintenance period is. So my maintenance began yesterday and it is a two year agreement. So we, it ends in 2026. And that's pretty much all you have to enter um, when you enter an entitlement manually. Now you can save this and you can put in some additional information uh, like any allocations. If you wanna set some conditions on this entitlement perhaps, um, if you wanna specify serial numbers or if it's owned by a specific group or person, uh, maybe I purchased this for one of my subsidiary companies or I purchased this for a specific location. Say I purchased this, these 20 for my Santa Clara office location, or maybe I purchased it for the HR department. Um, and then I can also track other things and I should probably get in the habit or you should get in the habit of tracking things like your vendor. So um, we're going to track this to our TechSmith since we purchase our uh, TechSmith products directly from TechSmith, we are going to make sure we specify that here on the entitlement. And that's going to be really handy if you're trying to run, say, some top spend or how much am I spending for this particular vendor. Um, it's really important to track this kind of information. Uh, also, I can, should be tracking what date did I purchase this software. And since I'm looking at an invoice, right, I probably want to put in my invoice number um, in in here so that I have it for a quick reference. Now I could track my GL or my cost center, but I'm not actually doing that, so I'm not going to bother. Um, you can also uh, attach it to your contract. So say you have a master agreement or something, you want to attach it to that, etc. And so that, or if you have license keys as well, you could track those as well. And we'll get into some of these other features in other videos. But for now, I've gone ahead and I've entered everything that I wanted to for this entitlement. So as the default state, when you create a new entitlement is build. So now that I'm done, I'm going to want to go ahead and publish this. And once I've published it, it'll change the state in use. And here's where I can go ahead now and I can start running a reconciliation for the publisher TechSmith and see what my compliance position looks like. And that takes us to the end of the demo for creating an entitlement manually. So in this video, we defined what software entitlements are. We discussed the different methods you can use to create entitlements. And we did a demo on manually creating a software entitlement using the default entitlement form. So for more information on this subject, you can go to the ServiceNow product documentation site and search for create entitlements in workspace. And that'll have a lot of the information on everything I just showed you. Also on YouTube and the ServiceNow community, there should be a playlist called Ask a Ranger Software Asset Management, where you'll find this video as well as others related to software entitlements like gathering and creating software entitlements, creating entitlements using the guided playbook, creating entitlements manually, which is this video, uh, bulk creating software entitlements via the entitlement import feature. So go check those out. Hopefully you found this video helpful and I'll talk to you in the next one.